procrastinators, and welcome to the Nerd Cube Awards for 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, security has already asked you to stop doing that. Anyway, over the next 25 days, we'll be celebrating the very best video games of 2022. A year that gave us a new Doctor, a new Monarch, and about 45 new Prime Ministers. This will be rounded off on the 25th with the reveal of the game of the year. The only one that matters. But first, the rules to be eligible. The game had to have been released between December 2021 and December 2022, unless I decide that doesn't matter, and no early access releases count as that's not properly been released yet. I might break that one. Oh, and if I've not played it, it's not getting in. I don't think I break that rule. Actually, no, wait, no, I totally don't. Before we begin, let's fire off a few games that didn't quite make the cut, or were frankly nowhere near this list, but otherwise people will complain that I forgot about them. Stray was gorgeous, beautifully animated, and made zero sense if you think about it for more than five seconds, just like owning a cat. Cult of the Lamb was fun in a don't hug me, I'm scared sort of way, but it kept pulling me away from the combat to literally clean shit up. Why? Horizon Invisible Walls annoyed men who don't know anything about women, but also annoyed me for being very forgettable even while actively playing it. The very fun Dying Light 2 got a patch a few weeks after release that introduced a bunch of stuttering and I forgot about it until honestly right now. Gran Turismo 7 was poncy, wanky and car molesty in all the right ways, but it also had you buy the cars with real money. So fuck that. Return to Monkey Island might be good, but I want to play the originals first and I didn't have any time. You know how it is. And finally, Tunic, which everyone says is fab, but again, I've not played yet. Time, what a bastard. And so with all that set, it's time for the first award, which is the Tom Sawyer Award. This is given to the game that's best taken at a slower pace. No need to cram more go-go powder up your nozzle to finish it in a few days like you were a real games journalist. Take your time. Do all the side quests. See the sights. Let it percolate a while. What I'm saying is the Tom Sawyer Award goes to the game that you really don't want to rush. And the winner is... God of War Ragnarok. Okay, so hands up who thought this would be my game of the year. Yeah, and one, two, three. Yeah, that's actually quite a few. And understandable too, it's a damn fine game. What are Sony's best? Actually, is Kratos the new flag bearer for the PlayStation brand? I mean, Nintendo's got Mario. Microsoft has um, Todd Howard. And now Kratos has ripped old Nathan Drake into bits and taught the boy a valuable lesson while doing so. Nobody's on top of the food chain forever, especially not that wise-cracking twat Drake. So why this award? Well, in Ragnarok, very early on, there's a side quest that has you rescue a creature, Beast Below style. It's about two hours long, not important in the grand schemes of the story. And the overall result is just simply learning more about the history of a side character. And it's incredible. If you just ran to the next main story checkpoint, you'd have missed out on a beautiful movie-length story just so you can go and complain online that games are too short for their cost in this day and age. You idiot. But here's why God of War Ragnarok is here at the start of the list and not in the top slot at the other end. I don't think it's as good as the competition. And that's not a knock on God of War. That's a testament to how good some games were this year. Also, as per the award, I've not finished it yet. I can't even see the ending for where I'm standing, but I know it's out there somewhere and I'll get to it when I'm good and ready. But for now, I'm going to stop and smell the digital roses for a little while longer. Ragnarok is coming, but I'll get to it when I'm good and ready. See you tomorrow.